you get the information? I'm just, uh, I just want to let you guys know, I've just hit the record button uh, and we, we do record the content so that we can go back to it, look at it. We can post, we post it in the teams app as well. And we're going to be posting the videos on my YouTube channel so that we can reference them anytime. So, and then back to you, Ping, I know you wanted to welcome. We have some new faces. I'm so excited to see all the people that join us regularly and also some new faces today as we talk about time management and prioritizing. Ping? Hi. Yeah, Bruno was going to share where he got the information. I was just going to say that I've been receiving these emails about the workshops, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I came to, uh, from Brazil last year and everything mm -hmm. was so new for me. I had to do some training. I had to, you know, learn things in my own lab. So I, I was not having time to, you know, sure. to focus in an, another workshop. But right. then I decided to, you know, this year would be different and I would like to, you yeah. know, see what you guys talk in this, this awesome. workshop. And, and clearly you were prioritizing, which is funny because that is today's topic. Time oh, management that's great. and prioritizing. <laughs> so welcome. Yeah. And I know, Jakina, you said you were joining because you wanted to learn something to help you manage your time. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We really respect the time frame. So we start at 1230. We officially end at one. And then we hang out for up to 15 minutes after that for the what Ping calls the meeting after the meeting. So okay. we're but it is a power half an hour. So let's launch right into our content for today. And if I can get a thumbs up from you guys, that you can definitely see my screen here. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. And let me ask you, which ones of these do you relate to the most, right? Do you relate most to I'm late, I'm late for a very important date? Or are you more the early bird gets the worm? Or number three, I'll do it. I'll get to it but later. So if you had to pick a number and pop it in the chat for me, one, two, or three, one being our rabbit, two being our early bird, and three being our Costa Rican sloth hanging out there. And we got some threes and some twos right now, even mix in the house here for our people. Oh, and then we have some mixes, one, three, sometimes two, sometimes a three. Well, for so many of us, time management is a challenge and it can be in different seasons of our lives in different stages, different activities. So I want to leave you with seven really great tips today that are going to help you with that. But before we launch into those, I just need you to do something on your own notepad or scrap piece of paper or digital note, whatever you like to do. I'm going to give you one minute to write down as fast as you can 10 things that you know you need to do pretty soon. Either you've been putting them off or you're holding off. So give everybody a full minute to launch your thoughts on paper. Okay, and I'll keep track of time for us. And 20 seconds left. Okay, that is our quick one minute list. If you didn't get all 10 down, that's okay. You can continue to do it as we go along, but want to make sure that we at least start to write down some of these activities. And I, it, from our conversations shared already in the, in the pre-chat here, I realized that for so many of us, time management is a big issue. And so the bad news is that time does fly. The good news is that you are the pilot. And this is a quote I'm putting up here on the screen for you. And I don't know how many of you guys wear watches. I don't wear one myself. But if you've ever been to a casino, look around and you'll find one thing that's missing is no clocks in casinos but because they are more focused on getting people to stay in the casino than to be worrying about time. But 
Outside of a casino for the rest of us, we all think about time and time management. And there's this study that was done, it was a Huffington Post, it was a few years ago, I think it was 2017, where they studied the amount of time that we spend doing certain things in a 79 year lifespan. So let's just average it to about 80 years, which is close to 28,000 days. We apparently spend 33 of those years sleeping, 13 of those years working, 11 of those years after work on some type of a screen. So we like to consume television, mobile, iPad. Then we spend five years eating. I think I might spend a little more than five years than eating because I love eating and cooking. But anyway, vacation time, then schooling three years, exercise, romance, and our social life each take one year of our time. And then after we've done all those things, we have eight years left for lots of other things like our, our hobbies, our personal interests, like all the other things not listed here. So I thought this was a pretty interesting thing to think about. And one thing that I've taught in my leadership course is this Eisenhower time matrix. Four quadrants, so it's super simple here. On the top left, the green one, number one, is the things that are urgent and important. And number two are the things that are important, but not urgent. And then that was the blue one. And then number three, the yellow one, things that are urgent, but not important. And the fourth one, the red one, are things that are not urgent and not important. So what do I mean by some of those things? For number one, these are things like crises that happen, deadlines, meetings, pressing issues. You know, think back to when COVID started. We had a lot of crisis mode happening. Those are the things that are urgent and important, have to be handled right away. Hey, welcome. I see lots of new faces coming on in. Hi, everybody. Number two, right? So number one, these are the things we need to manage because they happen and they're urgent and important. Then we have the number two, and these are things like preparing, planning, building relationships in our teams with our family members, relaxation and recreation, continuing education, right? The things that we know are valuable and important, but they don't have an immediate timeline. And these are the things where we really want to focus a lot of our time because they're going to bring us the most value in our life. Then number three, these are things like disruptions that happen in our life. Sometimes some emails can be a disruption. They're not important. They can be a bit of a disruption. Some meetings and some phone calls and even some popular activities that don't necessarily help us be productive. And then lastly, in that fourth quadrant, oh, and, and these are the things we want to try and avoid, right? The urgent, seemingly urgent, but not important items. And then lastly are things like junk mail, some escape activities, or, and, and what we would consider a time waster, which is very relative, right? Because we might not always consider spending some time watching a, a favorite show a waste of time. We may need that as part of our own relaxation. But I think it's when it's like binge watching the 20 shows in a row that we might be heading into this quadrant four. And then these are the things we really need to limit. So now let me turn it back over to everyone here and you can share out loud if you like or in the chat. What's your guilty procrastination pleasure? Like what's that thing you like to just procrastinate that you feel like, oh, guilty pleasure. I know I shouldn't do this, but I do this. If anyone wants to share, Bruno, reading papers. What kind of papers? Oh, very specific papers about my own field, you know. Yeah, I know that I have to read them to be updated, but sometimes I just, you know, they are too, you know, specific. It's not something that gives me pleasure like a book. <laughs> gotcha. So that's something that you know you need to do, but you're currently procrastinating on is reading those papers. Gotcha. So a guilty pleasure for Desiree playing games on your phone. Anusha TV, right? That's a pretty common one. Christina, Facebook. Yeah, social media can be one of those things too. Christine, looking at gardening catalogs and watching home improvement shows. Oh man, I do love a good home improvement show. Games on the phone, Google rabbit hole. Yes, Marsha, whether it's Google or Reddit or something, it's like, I just went to check an email. How did three hours just pass? And all of a sudden I've just learned how to be better with my plants and how to take better care of my computer. It's like, what happened to my life? 
And then food videos. Yes, easy. I'm so with you. I'm kind of obsessed on TikTok with these cooking videos. It's crazy. And and Juana cooking shows. So cr crazy. Oh, man, easy. I don't know what Wordle is. I, you know what? Forget. I don't even want to know what that is. But I want you guys to think about your own time matrix. And of course, I want to share mine with you. So if we were going to look at what time matrix, my time matrix, and I share this with my students sometimes too, is for me in, in quadrant one, it's things like getting getting messages, texts, emails from, from one of my students, from a supervisor, from my clients. Those things are urgent and important. I have to take care of them quickly. Family health issues that happen, you know, want to step into action right away. And currently, this just happened yesterday. I ran over something that flew out of nowhere on Route 78. And so now my bumper was affected. Thankfully, nothing major has happened, but that bumper needs to get taken care of. So that was not on my agenda, but something that now has become an urgent and important quadrant one item. The things for me where I should be focusing my time on are preparing for next semester so that doesn't creep up on me and I feel a little stressed out. Investing money. I, am, I would love to find a mentor for myself in the world of education physical therapy exercises, things I know I need to do, and my spiritual growth. The things that are not important, you know, some emails, sometimes my social media notifications, or I get into information overload, like I love to consume knowledge. And at some point, I just have to say, stop, that's, that's just too much. Some meetings, and I am an extroverted person, if you guys don't know that about me. So sometimes I might like over socialize, although COVID kind of took care of that and nipped that in the bud. And then my last quadrant here, the not important and not urgent, it is possible that I spend a little too much time taking Snapchat videos and pictures of myself. So that is definitely something that I know I need to limit. And of course, for so many of us, we are dealing with distractions and disruptions all the time. And that's why we're here. I want us to create new habits. But before we talk about those habits, we do have to think about the fact that we live in a world where disruptions are very common, whether it's notifications on your phone popping at you all the time, or you're working from home and the email just became even more important and you don't know how to turn it off. But one thing is for sure, we have to learn to deal with distractions. And I know for me, productivity apps do help that help me focus. So you can check into some for your phone, for your computer, they're really great. So hopefully you guys are ready for these seven new habits. Because according to Aristotle, who's super famous for saying really, really meaningful things, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So, and I just want to say that you guys showing up to Campus Communication Cafe every other Friday is also a great habit that helps you with your communication, with your engagement at work, and today specifically learning about time management. So let's get right into number one. It is... Pareto's principle or the 80-20 rule as it's known. And he discovered this because he found that 20% of the pea pods in his garden back in 1906 contained 80% of the peas. He also observed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. So the way that this translates to our lives today is that you wrote down those 10 things in the beginning. And if you, if you uh, came in a little bit late, I asked everybody to write down 10 things you know you need to do now. So applying the 80-20 rule means that we should look at two of those 10 things and realize what's the most important thing on this list and do that one first and then find the second one. And we're likely to find that the top 20% of our to-do list brings us 80% of the results. But what we often do is we focus on the lower 80% that only gives us a 20% return rather than focusing on the top 20 that gives us an 80% return. So making sure that we're spending our time wisely on the most important things. And that is the 80-20 rule. The second one is what we all know, making a list, but also calendar blocking. So putting time in our calendar. Let's just say self-care is an important item you've been procrastinating on. Actually putting that in your calendar as time, now you have a date with yourself. And if somebody asks you for that time, you can say that that time is committed to something else. 
So calendar blocking, actually, whether you use a paper calendar or a digital calendar, physically putting something into a calendar is fantastic. All right, and I have another quote here from Steve Covey. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. So I do find that that is a great thought that helps me too. The third thing is something you may not have heard of, which is to manage tasks, talent, and energy. I know I'm not telling you anything new by asking you to write things down and put it in your calendar, right? That is not novel. However, maybe you haven't considered besides what you need to do, what are you skilled at and what do you have the energy for? So thinking about our body clock, the things that drain us and the things that energize us and seeing how we might delegate the things that drain us if we have that option and thinking about what are some of the things that we're really good at? What are the talents that we bring to the table? I ask my students, whenever we have a class block, if my classes are three hours, is this time of day your high energy point or your low energy point? So we need to think about too, hey, if I'm super energized in the morning, then that's when you should schedule your most important things, those top 20 things, when you have the most energy, rather than putting them in the afternoon when you're feeling a little more tired. So just consider your own energy levels when scheduling. And of course, I grew up being told that multitasking is important and I should learn to do it, but the science does not back that up. And according to a very ancient moral saying by Publius Cyrus, to do two things at once is to do neither. And the science backs it up that our brains just do not handle multitasking well. In fact, I can't remember the name of the researcher, but over at a California Irvine, the University of California Irvine, there was a study done that when we start and stop something, it takes 23 minutes and 15 seconds on average for us to get back on track. So when we get distracted or try to do two things at once, it actually ends up totally derailing our productivity. And a really cool tip that I want to share with you here is something called alphabet work that I learned from the science of people, Vanessa Van Edwards. And I will share the link at the end of the chat here with you if you wanna watch a video more in depth about this. But the idea is thinking about your A work, B work, C work, D work, and F work. So not to bring you back to school and thinking about grades, but we're all familiar with the concept. So the A work, and you can use a sticky on a board or a digital board to write it down. Let's just say you're on a, doing a project. Your A work, you would think, these are the things that I'm really good at and I enjoy. I'm great at it and I love doing it. Your B work is you're pretty good at it, but you're not the best in class, so to speak. Uh, you may have to struggle a little bit to do it, but it's not super difficult, right? And maybe it's not your favorite, but it's not bad if you have to do this, like you're okay with it. And then C is your average work where, just like it says, you're, you're decent at it, but it's not as enjoyable as your A or your B work. And then D is for dread. The D work is the work that you really don't want to do and you're not as skilled at. You tend to make a lot of mistakes when you do it and you're completely drained. That's another D word. So you dread it and you feel drained. The F work is the work we're just not gifted in. This doesn't come naturally to me. I'm terrible at it and I don't like it. I wanted to bring this to you because you might want to do this with your teams. You might want to ask everybody to hop up on a big digital whiteboard online or in if you're in person and are able to do it too. And then you might see, hey, my D work is actually Felicia's A work. So let's see if we can talk about that and, or vice versa. She maybe does not in, in her F column are some things that are in my A and B. So seeing where those gaps are, where people's talents are, what gives them energy. So you can think about delegating work in the middle the C work and finding other people who love doing the D and the F stuff that you can't stand. So I think this is a really great time beneficial team management project that first of all, can open up to a lot of great conversations and help get clarity on the tasks involved in a project and really see where people enjoy their activities or what they feel that they're good at. So 
quick tip here, again, alphabet work from Vanessa Van Edwards of the Science of People. Number four is the Pomodoro technique. So I find that half of the people in the rooms have heard, half have not, but this came about when uh, this man was using a tomato timer, a Pomodoro tomato in the shape of a Pomodoro tomato timer in the kitchen. And he found that if you were to work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break and repeat that four times. So you complete two hour cycles and then take a big break in the middle and do it again, that those intervals really help. You know, I've put this to the test myself many times and it does jumpstart my productivity. Just having that timer does something powerful for me. But what I've also found is once I've got that momentum going the 25, five, the 25 minutes starts to go really quickly. So sometimes you might want to do 45 minutes of work, 15 minutes of rest and break up your hour that way. I, I'm not so strict about the 25, five, but I know that it really helps to start with 25 because then you don't feel like you have to do work for long periods of time. And it really does jumpstart. You'll be amazed at what you can get done when you put that timer on and it helps you build so much momentum for the rest of your day. Number five is called eat the frog. And remember I told you sometimes I waste a little bit of uh, time on Snapchat. This is one of the things I do sometimes here. So eat the frog is a very simple principle, which means to combat procrastination. I think it was Mark Twain that said, that said this, if you eat a live frog first thing, you will know you've already done the hardest thing in your day on your to-do list and the rest will seem so much easier to swallow. So starting with the most difficult thing is eat that frog, right? The most important task. So if you were to look at your top 10 list that you created in the beginning, the list of 10 things that you know you need to do now, what would the frog be? And do that one first. And I'm trying to go through all these before our time is up. The next one, number six, is the five second rule. And this is from Mel Robbins. She wrote a book on this concept. And it's actually a pretty simple thing. And it really is counting down to five, four, three, two, one. So her, her steps for coping here are number one, you forgive yourself for procrastinating, release yourself of guilt and shame for the things you did not do. Number two, stop and ask yourself, what would future Chris, Chris do? What would future Anusha do? What would future Tatiana do? So that you have a little bit of objectivity in the moment and can think, okay, will future me be happy that I sat here and watched five hours of the show? Or would future me feel really good if I watched one show and got my work done? And then the third thing is to literally count down five, four, three, two, one, and then move like a rocket ship going in space. Just move, count down to five, and then move. A lot of people have found this strategy to be very, very helpful. So I want to share it with you guys too. And the last one, number seven, is to practice JOMO instead of FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. Or we're afraid, especially it happens a lot on social media. We feel like people are living these amazing lives and we feel like we are missing out on something. But there is this other thing called JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. So instead of feeling the fear, we might experience some joy. This is a picture of my little sister. I forget if I've shared with you guys that in this crazy life plot twist, I have a 10 year old sister. And so, you know, for, for when I think of her, there's a, a lot of joy that comes into my life. So Jomo, the joy of missing out, the joy of not being so busy all the time. So you might want to think about that. Those are the top seven. But of course, I want to give you a bonus one, which is to ask for help. You know, sometimes we can be super productive doing everything right, but it's just too much. And if you're anything like me, asking for help can sometimes be difficult. But I want to just put it out there for you to consider. And here's a screenshot of all of them, if any of you want to take that. And I want to give us five minutes in our breakout rooms to chat and to talk. What are the things on your list? Can you take one thing, put it on the calendar, schedule time, and discuss it with your partner? We're going to put people in breakout rooms of two so that everybody has a chance to talk today for five minutes can you schedule it? Can you get something on the calendar and just discuss what it is that you want to do? So I'm gonna put everybody automatically into breakout rooms and we're gonna open up six rooms now. So see everybody back here in five minutes and they'll open up here in just a second. Ready? 
See you soon. And if anybody needs me to move them to a breakout room, just let me know. And I'll pause the recording for our breakout room. But if you're watching this online, think about this too. What are some things, one or two things you know you need to do right now? Can you schedule it on the calendar? And is there somebody you can talk to for accountability? All righty, welcome back everyone Sorry, from your Gina, breakout we, rooms. I, I, I thought we welcome didn't back, know. welcome back everybody. Hi, you know, we're back. <laughs> All right, everyone is back and I, Power half an hour can feel rushed, but I hope you had enough time to chat. Mm -hmm. I am posting a link in the chat right now where you can download PDF of the slides today in case you felt rushed with anything. It's right there for you, including a link to that video if you wanna check out that alphabet teamwork situation I was talking about. And I know some of you need to go, it is one o'clock, but if you can stay for a couple minutes and debrief or you wanna share out loud, something that you took away from today or some project that you know you need to get done, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you got to go, have a great weekend, guys. <laughs>